okay so let let us look at again uh, the particular curve that uh, that we had previously so we'll just look at points that go beyond x equal to 1 uh, there was one more solution be below x equal to 1 uh, for that particular curve we'll currently not worry about that and we'll just consider that curve let's say in this particular form and this is going to be the solution that we are interested in we'll mark that solution as x star the star representing that it's uh, it's the true solution of that particular problem i'll just write it in larger letters okay uh, now the bisection method it's a bracketing method okay what we mean by bracketing method essentially is that we want we need two initial guesses such that one initial guess lies to the left of uh, this particular uh, equation then the other guess lies towards the right of this particular equation so the first guess that we are we'll have let's say is and we'll write this as xl l to represent that it lies to the left of uh, x star and the other one will write this as x r uh, to represent that x r lies to the right of uh, x star uh, x r lies to the right of x star okay so this these are the two initial guesses that uh, uh, we will start off with uh, since it's a bracketing method these two guesses should lie on either side of uh, x star so now the question is how do we know whether these two uh, guesses lie on either side of x star well that is because f of x l is going to have a sign which is different from f of x r okay so if so in this particular example f of x l is positive and f of x r is negative in this example okay so if we multiply of course if if the curve was reversed uh, if you if you can think of a mirror image of this particular curve in that case our f of x l is going to be negative and f of x r is going to be positive but if we multiply f of x l with f of x r because we are multiplying a positive number with a negative number that particular uh, product we know for sure is going to be negative irrespective of what type of curve the, that we get as long as xl and xr are going to bracket the solution the product of xl and xr is uh, always going to be uh, negative okay so rather than looking at this particular uh, criterion to decide whether xl and xr lie on either side of x star the criterion that we will use to determine that is going to be f of xl multiplied by f of x r should be less than 0 okay so the first uh, thing that we need to do is to determine the initial guesses and the initial guesses are such that f of x l multiplied by f of x r should be less than 0 I am from this point onwards I am going to use a shorthand notation f uh, superscript uh, l in the bracket to represent f of x l. So for f of x l I will just use a shorthand notation f of l this is going to be uh, our initial guess the second step that we said is to find out how we will move uh, these from these starting at these two initial guesses how we will get the next solution so that we move the initial guess to the next guess okay and the bisection method or is also known as midpoint method and the idea be behind my bisection method is quite simple is you move from xl and xr to the midpoint between xl and xr so in this particular case the midpoint let's say is lies over here and that is going to be our x2 okay so our x2 
is going to be our x l plus x r divided by 2. So, that is going to be the midpoint of uh, uh, of the particular expression uh, of of the particular uh, line connecting x l and x r. Okay, so that's going to be our x two. The next question is to check whether if the solution is converged. Okay, in this particular example that I have drawn pictorially what we see is that the solution is not converged because we have not really reached the true solution or the other way to look at this is that we are still far away from uh, our f 2 uh, our f of 2 uh, x 2 is still far away from uh, 0. Okay? So, there are two ways to determine whether the solution is reached or not uh, one method to determine is whether f of 2 minus f of l whether that is less than some predetermined value epsilon okay or the other method is whether uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry this should be x of 2 minus x of l the previous solution and the current uh, the new solution whether they are less than a predetermined value uh, epsilon or the other way other uh, 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 criterion that we can use is whether the function f of x 2 whether or not that is less than certain other value delta. Okay? We can use either or both of these methods some of the more advanced uh, numerical techniques uh, uh, that are available uh, in various packages such as MATLAB and so on they will use both these criterion uh, criteria and uh, check both these criteria and determine whether the solution is reached or not. Uh, in general as, as we had uh, done in module 2 uh, what we had said is we are interested in finding out how close is uh, our new solution to the previous solution and if the new solution is close enough to the previous solution we will say that the solution is reached. So, from this point onwards I am just going to talk about the first criteria is whether the new solution is close enough to the old solution and uh, this epsilon value we need to take we that is something that we need to predetermine is how exact we need our solution to be. For example, uh, one, one way to choose this particular epsilon is this epsilon should be equal to let us say 10 to the power minus 4. Okay? Uh, for example, in, uh, in, in this particular case of 2 minus x plus ln of x the solution that we uh, uh, the, that we get are uh, around 0 0.1 and the third second solution that we get is of the order of 3. So, what this particular criteria for the solution th uh, equal to 3 means that is that uh, the solution needs to be accurate in essentially up to the fourth decimal place. Uh, beyond that we do not care about uh, with respect to the solution that that uh, we are trying to get. So, if the solution is reached okay, our x 2 is going to be uh, uh, the, the actual solution if it is not reached we will increment i and we will go back over here and repeat, uh, repeat this particular situation. Now, the question is before going back over there uh, we now need to uh, ensure that x 2 and the uh, other solution is going to still bracket uh, the, the, the true solution. So, in this particular example now because x 2 lies on the same side of x star as x l our x new x l we are going to be uh, replace it with x 2 okay? and now x 2 and x r are going to bracket this particular solution. Okay? So, what uh, before we go to the next step what we need to do is verify bracketing and what that essentially means is if f of l multiplied by f of 2 is less than 0, if f of l multiplied by f of 2 is less than 0 what, uh, then what that means is 
L, uh, XL and X2 are lying on the either sides of the solution. So, we replace XR with X2. Okay. However, if f, uh, f of x l multiplied by f of x 2 is greater than 0, then we will replace x l with x 2. Okay. So, let us again look back at uh, this particular figure uh, that, uh, that we had. Uh, f of x l is positive, f of x 2 is positive, the product of these two terms is going to be positive. Therefore, we are going to replace uh, essentially x l with x 2, uh, because f of x l is, uh, uh, because x l then is on the same side of uh, x 2. So, now what, what we end up doing is, we this is no longer our x l, this becomes our new x l. Okay. So, now we will go back and we will then use solve this particular expression with x 3 equal to x l uh, plus x r divided by 2. So, we will now have x 3 equal to x l plus x r divided by 2. Uh, whether or not the solution is reached, we will check that criterion by subtracting x l uh, uh, from x 3 and taking that absolute value, verifying whether that is less than our predetermined value epsilon or not. If it is less than the predetermined value epsilon, our solution is reached. If not, we will we will multiply f l with f 3, verify if it is less than 0. If it is less than 0, then x r will be replaced by x 3. If it is not less than 0, then x l will be re replaced by x 3. Okay. So, let us again go back to this particular figure and see what, what we get. So, uh, the midpoint for this particular chord is over here and this is our x 3. Okay. When we consider f of x 3 and multiply it with f of x l, we get the product f l multiplied by f 3 is less than 0. If f l multiplied by f 3 is less than 0, then we retain x l, but we replace x r with x 3 and that is what I will I'll do over here is replace x r with x 3. Okay. So, this essentially becomes uh, uh, our new solution x r and we repeat that over and over again until we get convergence. Okay. Uh, and in order to repeat that, we will I'll uh, in this particular uh, uh, algorithm, I will replace all the purple parts essentially with the term i plus 1 and we will keep repeating that uh, until we get, uh, we basically get convergence. Okay. So, And I will just erase this part and say and if yes, Essentially, this is going to be our algorithm for the bisection method. Start with initial guesses, uh, figure out a way to get the new solution x i plus 1. In the bisection method, this particular, uh, uh, this particular guess is just going to be an uh, the midpoint of the line connecting x l and x r. Uh, check whether the solution is reached. If the solution has not reached, go back to the step 2 and repeat it over and over again until the solution is reached uh, to a particular pre-specified criterion. Okay. So, this is going to be our, our algorithm 